Hello game dev enthusiasts, welcome back to my channel, how are you doing? Uh, as always, or nearly always, I'll begin with a disclaimer. This video is not meant to be a comparison of the two engines, it's more like a summary of my attempt to port a somewhat sophisticated third-person project from Godot 3 to Godot 4. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I have been porting this thing to Godot 4 since Godot 4 was in pre-alpha. It's been really frustrating at times, if I'm honest, but overall I am a huge proponent of Godot 4. I think it has immense potential as a 3D engine, uh, and recently I've been reinvigorated in my quest by the news of the long-awaited Godot 4 beta being just around the corner now. Uh, so this video is a devlog for my third-person post-apocalyptic uh, demon shooter game called Penitent. And uh, here's what I've got so far. Uh, first of all, I've added some sound effects and I was amazed to see how much more depth a game receives when you complement visuals with audio. It's uh, easily 50% more immersive now. Uh, and I've only just started adding those. Uh, the gameplay is suddenly so much more satisfying. I mean, just listen. Yeah, um, I've done some work on environments, I've created a few and saved them as resources and I think I'm fine for now. Um, so I have this one that uh, is like early afternoon um, blue sky with a bit of volumetric fog. This one I kind of like, it's, it's quite realistic, it's not overcooked. I'm using a skybox for this one which I made in Photoshop. I basically mashed together a few photos that I had of blue skies and so on. Uh, so this one would be cool for like an adventure type level where you need to do some exploration as opposed to gun down hordes of enemies. This one is obviously golden hour, it also uses a skybox that I made. Uh, a bit exaggerated maybe, but the atmosphere is pretty compelling, I think. This would be good for those self-searching moments where uh, the player wanders aimlessly, contemplating their existence as a half-demon in post-apocalypse hell looking for uh, cues that might bring him closer to unraveling the profound truth behind Shh. never mind let's let's move on this one is more like dark and gloomy um, again using a skybox I made in Photoshop this one took some effort to get right but I'm quite pleased with how it turned out it should work nice with some thunder and lightning and should be good for casual combat situations I'm quite happy with this one but my favorite one is still this one which is inspired by the paintings of uh, Bekczynski especially this painting if you don't know who Bekczynski was he was was a Polish painter, world famous for his dystopian surrealist art. He's by far my favorite artist. Uh, if you ever have a chance to see his paintings in a gallery somewhere, do it. It's a powerful experience. Uh, there's an air of like profound sadness and, uh, and horror around his works. It's literally like watching someone's dream that is a nightmare. So uh, a perfect inspiration for a horror shooter game. Uh, my first attempt at recreating this mood was made in Godot 3 and I have now recreated this scene in Godot 4. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. I think this shows the powers of Godot 4. In the original scene I used a simple water shader to create those puddles on the ground. I wanted to get this um, wet, muddy surface effect, whereas now I built a visual shader with a mask on the roughness channel, which is basically a procedural noise texture that I can control here in the inspector, so I can create those puddles of mud in a more random way and also make them look more natural. And here's one more. The source of inspiration for this one was this painting, and this one is more damp and swampy, which makes for a perfect place for a fight with an oversized creep crawler type of boss like a giant black widow or some such we'll see about that now in most cases with these environments uh, I'm using color correction with curves in the uh, environment node just like in Photoshop or any color grading tool color correction via curves is a staple in the cinematic color grading so it's really exciting that we now have this feature in the environment node in Godot 4 I mean you can literally achieve any film look you want and it's very easy to do as well for example if you you just enable the red channel with a linear preset, you could move your game into the upside down with just two clicks or so. Check this out. Okay, let me get my let me bring out my hacks. Hang on. Right, let's, let's, let's put 
this away. It's embarrassing. The next thing I implemented is this hit marker. Uh, it's a very gamey thing. I wanted to recreate it the same way I built it in Godot 3, which was I attached a rectangular plane to the player uh, with a transparent texture on it and moved it to a different clip mask so that the game camera can't see it. And when the player got hit with a bullet, I would check who owns that bullet. Uh, the owner of the bullet is always the gun that shot it. Uh, that's how I have it set up. So I set this plane to look at the owner of the bullet which just hit me, uh, just on the y-axis, and that gave me the uh, direction. And then I attached a camera directly above the player, looking straight down, and this camera would only see the marker. So then I created a viewport with a transparent background, and the source camera for that viewport would be the one that sees the marker. It worked great in Godot 3. Godot 4 has had lots of issues with viewports for a long time and uh, it still has, unfortunately. I did recreate this setup in Godot 4, but a transparent viewport was costing me 50% of the frame rate. I'm not kidding. Um, literally from 150 down to 74. So I simplified it. I attached the marker plane in front of the game camera and I'm just simply translating the rotation from Y to Z and the rest of the system works in the same way. And it works just fine without a viewport. Uh, the next thing is uh, terrain. Uh, in Godot 3 I was using Zillin's Heightmap Terrain plugin which isn't available in Godot 4 so I had to make my own system. It's a procedurally generated infinite Heightmap Terrain made using a vertex shader and a so-called uh, clip map mesh that allows me to benefit from uh, LOD. Uh, it's simple but very well performing. I made a few videos to cover exactly how this terrain is built, how it works with collisions, normals, navigation and so on. So do check them out if you're interested. I made a particle shader for my foliage system. Again, surprisingly well performing. Granted, Godot 4 is not even in beta yet um, at the time of making this video. I used this shader to create a rig of grass that follows the X and Z global position of the player. Uh, it has a central emitter which is positioned right in front of the camera and emits the uh, particles that we can see up front and uh, it's surrounded by six rectangular patches of grass that use so-called imposters, uh, simplified meshes whose role is to basically cheat the eye into thinking that there's more going on in the distance in terms of grass. And each of those six additional emitters has a visibility notifier attached to it which prevents it from emitting grass particles uh, when they're off screen. So it's performing quite okay too. I have a video on this particle system here on the channel somewhere if you're interested and of of course you can also use it for other things as well, not just grass. I actually used it to create these rocks in my Bakshinsky scene, so it's perfect for that too. I got navigation to work uh, with this terrain, which was a bit tricky, but it works, so enemies are back on the map. Uh, there is only one type of enemy demon for the time being. I've given him a bit of a facelift, I think he's a ton more creepy now and also has this dislocated jaw made of aluminum which swings when he's moving. I'm quite pleased with how he turned out. Not finished yet of course, I need to work on the body. Uh, I think he needs some armor. I also rewrote my procedural enemy spider from Godot 3. This was well annoying because this spider is essentially all vector math. In the new API uh, a lot of those fundamental vector functions have been changed so it took me a while uh, to figure this out. It's maybe not perfect yet but it works and I think it has potential. So I'm thinking about a smaller spider like this one which is basically a bigger cow. Well, okay bigger than that, more like a dinosaur maybe. And this one would be a real demon spider with like lots of creepy eyes and all the stuff that makes us fear arachnids. And then there would be this much bigger one that is colossal. It's the size of an ATAT. -AT. And this one would be a war machine basically. It would be operated by a squad of demons, it would have gun turrets mounted upon it and it would make for a much bigger boss essentially. I haven't really started designing it yet, this is just a prototype, I need to get the movement right first and I have to make it destructible too, but that is coming. I also attempted to recreate cloth uh, in Godot 3 the player had this kind of uh, cape around his waist which was a soft body. Unfortunately in Godot 4 the soft body node is not yet usable. It doesn't support materials, it doesn't work with lights, it behaves erratically and I just can't seem to be able to control it. It seems to be working correctly in isolation but when you want to use it 
for a piece of cloth on a character body, you can forget it. Which is a bit disappointing, to be frank, because I do recall a blog post on how soft bodies have been made so much better in Godot 4. A lot of YouTubers picked on that and distributed the message. Sadly, it's not true. So I'm gonna have to pass for now. Hopefully they fix it. And uh, yeah, this is where I am uh, with this project at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did. Follow me on Twitter for more regular updates, except the coming few weeks because I'm on vacation. Subscribe for more content and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.